all would stand to join him, please. And at this time, we're going to get started with our speakers. I don't know how this had it up here. We will get started with our speakers, and we will start with our elementary school students. If we can first have Miss Selena Bonner. Come on down. And Miss Selena is fourth grade, age 10, College Park Elementary School. Oh, you're not? She's nine. I'm sorry, thank you. Let me spray my thing again. Hold on. You gonna stand at the podium or next to it? Standing at the podium. Okay. Move it. You need me to hold it? Good. Okay. Being in this position to make a change is quite the honor. When I think about our country as a current fourth grader, I feel I see things differently from adults. If I was president, there would be a few changes I like to see. I remember telling my mom about field trips and each time she'd say, oh yeah, we did that, or yep, went there. Now from her time to mine, field trip options should have changed. So I want field trips to be places we can see people working and pretend ourselves. Maybe a news station or a water plant, maybe a restaurant. I understand adults don't like taxes, but I think a tax mandatory for homeless people will help solve that problem. There shouldn't be any homeless people we walk past. It's our responsibility to help those in need. So let's remember, that could have been me. That could have been you. Recycling is another important issue of mine. If we don't recycle things into renewables, it can hurt the environment around us, like the grass, water, and our animals. Clean food, teachers need more pay, and schools need more supplies. Everyone has different ideas of how we should better America. That's why we should work together. It should all be heard, because we matter. And I will hear you as your president. Thank you. Great job. Thank you again, Selena. Let's give her another hand, please. And next, we will have Miss Navina Lewis. Lavina, Navina is also fourth grade, age nine, correct? Yes. Okay. There's our music. Thank you. <laughs> when I'm president in when I'm president in 2045. I would give home, homes to the homeless. How? I'm so glad you asked that. I would build a house for the homeless and provide food, water, a mask, clothes, toothbrush, toothpaste, a bed to sleep in with, black, with blankets and pillows too. Soap and hand sanitizer. I would give the homeless the four C's. The four C's is a spray. It is a natural spray. It protects people from getting sick. I'd also do a food drive so all people can have food, even the ones that are not homeless. Speaking of the foodless people, did you know some people have at home but not food? The foodless. I will feed them veggies, fruits, and more. Now let's talk about teachers getting paid more because they are taking their own time teaching us kids. They have to make a lesson plan and come, and come in early, man. We got it easy. 
They're great at work. They even work on the weekend. They have to teach off. They have to teach online and off at the same time because of COVID right now. Speaking of money, we need help. We need free health care for people that that have money or for not. I need free health care. I have braces. Now let's get into women for president. I watched the debate and they're acting like five-year-olds. We need younger people, but not that young. No offense, but they're running for president at 80 years old. We need, we need a we need a mature young woman woman president. Remember me when it is 2045. I will be your young woman president. I am Navina Roxanne Lewis. Thank you so much. Let's give another round of applause for Navina. Okay, something was just brought to my attention. Parents, it is completely, completely up to you if you want your participant to pull their mask down. It's up to you because I just had a question. Um, you can just give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you want them to um, pull the mask down so we can be able to hear a little bit better. So just give them a thumbs up, thumbs down if you want to take the mask off. And also, uh, we apologize for the air. We can't have it kicked up too high because of the noise. We want to make sure that we hear the speakers today, okay? Next, we have Mr. Tyson Jones, third grade, age eight. Give him a hand as he comes. President of the United States and the first African American president. He served as president for eight years total. I was born as President Obama was reelected for his second term in office. I can remember at that after Obama, Barack Obama, completed serving his second term that I cried because he was a very good president. But my dad told me that it was time for him to let somebody else become president. I'm not old enough to be president, but if I was, but if I were president, I would try to address coronavirus, social injustice, and make sure that all the homeless have a home. Coronavirus, as of October 23rd, has claimed the lives of 226,000 people. Most schools are closed, most restaurants allow carry out only, and my parents, because of COVID-19, I can't play with my friends like I used to. My parents will not let me play sports on a team, go to sleepovers, or even go to church. If I were president, I would try to work with scientists to find a cure. I would alert people that this virus is deadly, and I would also recommend that people stay home as much as possible and wear masks and gloves until a cure is found. I would also provide money and resources to hospitals to help care for the sick. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor are three African African American individuals that look like me and were killed because of social social injustice. A person should not be treated badly just because of the, just because of the color of their skin. George, Ahmad, and Brianna all had families that cared for them. It makes me sad to see people that look like me being treated badly. George and Brianna were killed by police officers, and Ahmad was killed by jogging in a neighborhood. I sometimes jog in my neighborhood. If I were president, I would try to try I would try to solve this problem by having police officers learn how to respect other people and not judge them by the color of their skin. I would also require in school that students are required to go to learn how to treat others regardless of their race, religion, or sex. If you fail the social the social injustice class, you will be required to take it again. 
In 2018, the White House said that there was approximately half a million people homeless in, people in the United States. The top five causes of homelessness are lack of affordability, housing, unemployment, poverty, mental illness, and substance abuse. About one third of homeless people sleep on the streets. Another third sleeps in homeless shelters. If I were president, I would first try to make housing more affordable and so that those pe um, people with little money can, could afford a clean and safe place to live. I would also work with companies to increase employees' income so that they can afford to pay to cover their living expenses. Lastly, I would address the homeless situation by working with health care so that they can, um, lastly, I would, I would address homeless situation by working with health care for pre professionals to provide mental health services to those homeless people with mental issues. There are many problems that a president can work on to improve the, the lives of the American people. But I feel like addressing COVID-19, social injustice, and homelessness are the top priorities in my opinion. So vote Tyson Isaiah Jones for president, and I approve this message. Thank you, Mr. Tyson Jones. Let's give Mr. Jones a hand. And next we have Mr. Moses James V. If you could please come forward. Do you want me to hold it or do you want me to pull it down for you? Pull it down. Mask or no mask, parents? Down. If I were president, I would make my mom and dad proud. What is a president? A president is a boy or a girl that takes care of the country. The president has a really important job. The president's job is so important because the country needs to be safe. I'm the best kid for the job. I have the brains and the heart. When I was a little boy, Barack Obama was the President of the United States. The President lives in Washington, D.C. President Obama is my favorite President. He was a good role model. I went to the White House for my second birthday. I didn't see President Obama, but I did see a picture. I saw the whole family, and they were black like me. But that's not all. President Obama is nice, he makes good speeches, he listens, and he always tells the truth. I call my friends and family to ask what makes a good president. As president, I would help people make more money. Dad said that's called strengthen the economy. I would help all sick people. Daddy said that's called universal health care. My mom is a nurse and she helps all people. I would give more hugs. Daddy said, love is love. I would help people go to college for free. I didn't need daddy for this one. School should be free. Lastly, I believe we need to fight for equal rights. Martin Luther King said, my children should not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I'm only six right now, but in the year 2052, I'll be ready. So vote most in the fifth, and I approve this message. But 
Weren't they great? They were. So again, students, uh, middle schoolers, I will pull the mic up. So uh, if you need me to hold the mic, I will. Or if you, you know, pull the stand and want to hold it, either way, okay? So just one moment for me. And while we're waiting, just to let you know, um, Carla talked earlier about uh, youth mayor competition. And that's one we do want to have here at the City of College Park as well. Is this on? In the City of College Park as well, because we um, hopefully will get a youth leadership council shortly so that we, our, we can hear the opinions and the voices, give our youth a voice so that we can hear what their concerns are. Who better than the young people themselves who experiences different things on a daily basis to inform us? We as the parents know what we want for them and what we feel, but we have to listen. Just take a little time to listen to our young people. And then the elders, the young generation, work together, we can make positive change. So judges, do you need a little bit more time or are we ready? Okay, no problem, no problem. So our judges, okay, we're gonna take a short intermission, but while, before we take an intermission, I have to let everyone know that our mayor, Mayor Bianca Motley Broom did make it mayor. If you can please stand. Thank you. We also have a councilman, Ken Allen. He's back there in the suit. And I'm going to take this liberty before our little short intermission just to thank Councilman Allen as well because he gave us uh, over what? 300 or so dollars worth of gift cards for our kids. Because we, yes, yes. So all of you young people will walk away. We have uh, certificates and prizes for you, but you'll walk away with a little bit of something. And also, we have, uh, I'm not calling names right now, but the Economic Development Director of College Park also donated water bottles and six West masks for each of the bags as well. Yes, give him a hand. I'll say the name later. And if you get a chance, please, like Carla was saying, make sure to keep abreast of everything that's going on on the College Park website uh, with the Recreation Department, also with Six West. We just had a groundbreaking. We could not invite, it was going to be huge in March, but COVID hit a week, I think, before. So we could only invite just a few people to physically be there, but it was also filmed live on uh, that day is on our city website, Facebook. So please, get a, if you get a chance, make yourself have a chance to look at what's going on in College Park. We have a lot of great things happening. You can see the groundbreaking on our website under economic development. You can click at the top at Six West and also look at the development plan that's planned for our area. So the young people will also, we need your input on the things you would like to see new developments in our city. You might say bowling alley, skating rings, we don't know. We want to hear what you have to say, okay? Judges, are we ready? Yeah. Woo! I know that was tight, man. That's why we say they are winners and you're all leaving here with something today. Yes. Let's give them another hand as we get ready to go into part two for our middle school, school students. Our first speaker is Amanita, is it Drum or Drame? Okay, Amanita Drame, eighth grader, the Main Street Academy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanita Drame, and I am a student for Solutions. Today, my speech should be about abolishing homework or having hour-long recess, but unfortunately, my generation has been left to think about the responsibilities and the burdens of our political leaders. Don't you think it's crazy that me, a 13-year-old black Muslim girl who's excited about going to high school, could be the next victim of a racial or religious hate crime? With that being said, if I were president, the first thing I would do is require implicit bias training and body cameras for police officers. Why? Because the police are notorious for killing innocents of black men, black women, and black children. Note Tamir Rice, he was 12. Ayanna Jackson, she was eight. 
Oscar Grant, a Tatiana Jefferson, thousands more. In low-stake emergencies, we need to supply police officers with rubber bullets so as to reduce the amount of casualties for innocent lives. It has been proven that rubber bullets can inflict significant pain or injury. Due to tragedies dating back to the end of Jim Crow laws, issues pertaining to law enforcement and racism have been brought to the forefront of America's mind. Given this, many police officers are racially biased and should be dealt with appropriately. Hate crimes that are committed by reason of one's faith, race, color, gender, ethnicity, or nationality should be dealt with appropriately. America must improve human rights for its citizens. America must work to increase the implementation of domestic human rights without discrimination. In schooling and the workplace, we must ban hair discrimination in all 50 states. For a country that speaks so highly about being free and the best, it's embarrassing that we still have to talk about inequality in the workplace and schools. Many women and girls are turned away from jobs and sent home from school for wearing their natural hair. A new policy at Butler High School in Louisville, Kentucky banned dreadlocks, twists, afros larger than two inches, and cornrows. Yasmin Young opened her North Baltimore salon after she too was pressured by a former boss to tone down her hair, which she wore in a twist out. That style, she told, was too wild. Some schools have argued that dress codes are a critical component of school culture, and certain hairstyles or head wraps are distracting, unprofessional, or promote gangs or prison culture. Increasingly, students have pushed back, arguing that such definitions of professionalism are rooted in racism. Moreover, I would change the education system. I would place more emphasis on actually learning essential life skills as opposed to passing standardized tests. Life skills such as survival skills, mental health, home maintenance, personal relationships, and many more. I have an older sister who is a junior. She's basically memorized her way through school, learning how to solve for X in a dozen ways and how America truly became great, but she does not know anything about taxes, interest rates, or managing credit scores. School did not fulfill its promise to prepare her for life. Instead, it prepared her for college and debt. In other regards to women, I would mandate paid maternity leave. Of the 193 countries in the United States, only a small handful do not have a national paid parental leave law. Among those countries is the United States. Mandating paid leave will relieve income pressure during the first months with a new child and allow parents to be better able to afford the necessary m medical care for both the parent and baby. And finally, nobody should be starving in America. It is vital that we eliminate poverty so that no American will be without reasonable food, shelter, clothing, energy, and health care. I would redirect the 80 billion pounds of safe food that is annually being wasted to homeless shelters instead of landfills. There was so much more I wish I could discuss here today, such as dress codes and unequal pay for women, such as how on average a woman makes 80 cents for every dollar a man makes. I wish I could have added in all these topics, but I only had five minutes. I could not possibly discuss everything I wanted to change about America in five minutes. And when they tell us to leave because we complain, we have to tell them that we cannot possibly leave America when it's broken. We have to stay and fix it because this is our America. Thank you. Again, one more round of applause for Ms. Amanata Rame. Next, our next speaker, Mr. Christopher Murden. He's eighth grade, age eight, I'm sorry, age 13, the Main Street Academy. Hello everyone, good, good afternoon. My name is Christopher Murden. As you know, on November 3rd, 2020, we will elect our 46th president. I would like to be that president. If I were your president, I will help, I will work hard to change discrimination, and many, I will work hard to change discrimination. Many minorities face, many minorities face discrimination in this country. As a young black man, my parents taught me that I will face many challenges in this country. People shouldn't be judged by their race, gender, or 
ethnicity. I know that no one should be judged, but they should be judged by their personality. As your president, I will help improve our educational system. Education is extremely important and will be the thing that shapes young minds today. As a student, I know the educational system is very flawed. Teachers aren't paid well and have a low income. They often have no resources and no supplies. They also have no all outdated books. As president, I would change all of these issues. If I were president, I would reduce the crime rate by making guns illegal. Too many citizens are dying out here. We need to help citizens. As you know, we have a lot of problems in this country. And as your president, I will be willing to change the discrimination we see every day from George Floyd to just an average day per everyday person. As your president, I will change all of these things, the educational system, which is flawed, to the discrimination we see every day. We, I hope that we can make our future better and hope that we can make the United States better as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, one more round of applause for Mr. Christopher Merton. Our next speaker, Ms. Michaela Yamas. mission should be to act in the best interest of the people. If I were president, I would implement mandatory financial literacy classes for high school students and restructure welfare to phase loans and EBT money to drop in slower rates. Poverty is one of the most harmful issues to people because it affects everyday life. And although the rate of poverty in the U.S. decreased 1.3 percent since 2018, I wish to see more drastic drops during my term. Americans are being hurt by the removal of food help. For example, right now, an increase of monthly income by $100 could decrease benefits by about $100 as well. In my presidency, I would commit to withdrawing food support in a more reserved manner, such as decreasing benefits by $50 instead. As president, I would slow the lowering of EBT money as income increases, because currently the welfare system is structured in a way that gives American people no incentive to work, keeping poverty higher than it needs to be. An important part of reducing poverty is attempting to prevent it. This is why I would add a mandatory high school credit entitled Personal Financial Literacy. Teenagers who go to school for 35 hours a week should be gaining skills to give them an independent and stable future. However, that is not the case. Teaching youth how to prepare for the uncertainties of adult life is key to assuring that young adults don't make finance mistakes that are avoidable with just a little more information. This course will cover taxes, bills, rent, loans, and debt. To conclude, if I were president, I would focus on one of the biggest problems in this system, poverty. This is not to say I would neglect other American issues, such as health care, where I plan to place legislation that puts maximum price limits on life-saving medications, such as insulin, or environmentalism, in which I would put stricter regulations on companies to avoid irresponsible disposal of waste. But this is to say that the American people are hurting and poverty is a factor. I would be determined to right the wrongs of the past and push America into the future. Thank you. One more hand, everybody, for Ms. Michaela Yaman. We have one more speaker, right? Okay, let's give it up for our next speaker, Ms. Kanani McGee Howard, age eighth grade, I'm sorry, eighth grade, age 12. Let's give her a hand. Good 
Good afternoon. I'm Kanani McGee Howard. If I was president, I would focus on health care, police brutality, and hope. Did you know that 43.4% of adults ages 19 to 64 are not insured? This is a problem. I will improve our health care system so that people in my generation and generations before can live a healthier life. Also, I will increase our doctor's salary so they can properly keep us healthy for life, not only when we get sick. Secondly, police brutality. Let's talk. When the world stopped due to COVID-19, we the American people witnessed a lot via social media. The most important focus is to get our American people and officers together as one. If I was president, I would advise all schools to teach the law on all levels to students from kindergarten through 12th grade. I would make a mandatory law that all police officers take a test every day before they go out to support, service, and protect. This test will be a reminder of the United States standards and values. Last, but certainly not least, hope. If I was president, I would focus on hope. I will bring hope and love to our American people. Hope that tomorrow will be better than today. Hope that, hope that living in America, you will be safe. I will show my love and appreciation by visiting every state on a regular to sit down with the governors and mayors to see how we can help improve the economy and get homeless in a home. If I was president, I would be transparent and honest and I'll bring love to all our American people. If Americans see their leader love, they will love. As I walk to my seat, remember, if I, Kanani McGee Howard, was president, I will lead by example. The example is love. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. Wait, one minute, hold on. Okay, everyone, you have heard our elementary school um, speakers as well as our middle school speakers. So at this time, we're going to give our judges time to collaborate and do their magic. And Ms. Carla, have an announcement? Yes, I just wanted to say really, really quickly, while our judges deliberate, we're actually gonna take a 10 minute intermission. So please feel free to go grab a snack. Our babies have been up here for a while, so I just wanna give them a 10 minute break while the judges talk. They might as well eat while they deliberate anyway. So take 10 minutes and we're gonna announce our winners and give out our prizes in exactly 10 minutes. So please help yourself to the snacks. Thank you. And just to let you know, um, the snacks, we were going to have some sub sandwiches and different things, but right now, due to COVID, we didn't want food laying out. So everything is for you to enjoy now, also to take with you when you leave. Um, also, it was, um, I just want our kids, before, oh, well, they're already gone, so we'll do it later, but we want to give our parents an applause as well, but we'll, we'll let them applaud you later, parents. But l give yourselves a round of applause, parents. And the kids are running to that snack table. They'll applaud you in a minute. So this is our 10-minute intermission. Please let the participants get their snacks first, please, if you will, so that they can come back on stage. Thank you. If our mayor, our council member, Michelle, if you all would like to have anything to say, please come forward. I can pass you the mic. We need to hear. Is it take down? Uh-oh, let me see. I think I can still read. Okay. If you want to come up. You guys did an amazing job. I am so impressed. You got the opportunity to be up here and see what you could say and state to make a change in the world. I would definitely vote for all of you. And I love Moses, this little um, pen that says vote for Moses. That's amazing. <laughs> So congratulations, you all did an awesome job. I know your parents are proud of you, and we look forward to seeing you in the future, what you guys, what kind of changes you guys can make for us in the future. So I'm gonna turn it over to um, uh, the mayor. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to tell you how proud I am that you call College Park home. On behalf of this city, we need your leadership. We need your passion, we need your strength, we need your devotion to this community. 
So please don't let it stop here at this podium. If you want to tour City Hall, you let me know. You can come sit in our sit in our chairs. I don't know if you, can they sit in your chair, Council Now? All right, all right. You can sit in my chair. You can sit in Council Now's chair. I know Navina, you've already had the tour. But uh, for anyone else, if you want to come and see how your city works, we are more than happy for you to come on down. Actually, not you. Come on over. <laughs> Walk out this door and we'll go over it. Uh, but we're so grateful to have you here. We're so grateful to have these families here. Yes. Because you are what makes this city work. And we are working for you. So again, congratulations on your participation. I want to see at every opportunity we have to have events like this because every time you get up there and you fight those butterflies that are in your stomach when you get up there to publicly speak, they'll be better next time around. So all of you did a great job. So very, very proud of half the city. Thank you. I just want to say a couple of words. Uh, I am so proud of each and every one of you. Uh, I'm so proud of the city of College Park uh, for putting something like this on. We need to do more of this. This is the first annual. There will be more. Uh, and, and I love these projects, especially when they're involved with you. So uh, thank you very much, parents. Thank you for all your support. And, you know, God be with every single one of you because this is a blessing for College Park. First elementary who would like to come forward is Miss Selena Bonner. Give her a hand. Woo! Mr. Tyson Jones, come on down. Let's give him a hand. Miss Navina Lewis, come on down. Thank you. 